hello all uh good evening thank you so much for taking your time to going through this video um i really appreciate um with what you're doing to support me in watching these videos uh in this session uh i'd like to talk about a lambda function having a static ip address what i mean by static ip address is a lambda function when executed normally um when you create one and you try to execute one it's going to execute in a country containerized environment but it's just going to have a random ip address um being assigned when it's being executed but what if i wanted to have a static a public ip address that should be associated with my lambda function so that every call that i make or every time when i run my scripts i would want to make sure all my communications go or originate through that specific outbound ip address or the public ip address so in the first case i probably showed you on how to create a lambda function and how to execute a lambda function what do you mean by what does it really mean to have a lambda function built within the aws environment uh, I, please feel free to watch my previous video to get more understanding what a lambda function is how things are going to be executed within uh, aws environment and how it should be set up uh, i showed you an example there but in this video, I'd like to showcase a quick way of having a static IP address associated with a la Lambda function so that every time I run my script, I just run from that uh, origination, right? So let's say, for example, you wanted to call a third party API and they only allow to communicate from a specific IP address versus you know random ip addresses or maybe it's not exposed to everyone or maybe to the internet right so in the same scenario I, last time i just took the green eye green noise example uh green noise allowed me to communicate from any of the public ip versus you know some specific or whitelisted ip address but what if the the third party green noise is gonna allow us to only communicate from a specific IP address what's gonna happen in that scenario right this is what uh, the video is all about so I'm gonna show you what I had made changes so for example again the same code in my previous video I just adjusted or added a function here get my IP address basically what it's doing is calling uh, when executing the script it's just gonna check my IP address that where it's being executed and it's just printing out these are the only three lines that I added I wanna, and I, you know, in, I'm invoking this function so that, you know, every time when the script runs, you know, I get the response uh, uh, in a text format so that, you know, that's just going to print the IP address straight out. Um, I'll show you in the Lambda example so that you can understand here. So, for example, I'm just going to test it. As you can see here, I do have my code already built out uh, with this adjusted. Uh, I'm just going to test this here. So as you can see, it did execute and of course the same output because I'm just trying to uh, you know query for the same IP address for the Greenhouse API. As you can see in the log output, as you can see my static IP address, uh, elastic IP address associated with my Lambda function. I'm going to execute again. I'm gonna execute again. I'm gonna execute again. I'm gonna execute again. That's all I could see be because all my requests are being originated from this public IP address. That being said, you know, you already had a Lambda function built out, let's say, right? And you wanna make sure that you deploy this Lambda function to a specific VPC where you can assign a uh, elastic IP address. How do I do that? you can do that by building the vpc which i'm not going to show you but i'll show you some of the aesthetics on you know how to build that stuff right so for example i'm just going to go into the my vpc section so i'll just show you what i built to get to that stage right so i can see here so i built this my lambda testing vpc i can just click on uh this and then i 
can see all the details associated with my BPC. But what I, what I really did is, as you can see here, this is my resource map, basically showing like you know what are being associated with what, right? So I built my BPC with these two submit subnets in uh, US East 1A availability region, US East 1B. Uh, these two subnets. So one is private and I named it as one is private and one is public in the same way in the uh, other region. The, the reason why I built uh, in two different availability regions are because I want to make sure my Lambda function is, uh, you know, uh, is highly available. So if for some reason, if one region goes down, I do have other region to kick out. As you can see here, uh, so this one is associated with uh, my route tables right so I only built out uh, for testing purpose I only built out uh, two route tables so as you can see here one is pu private to private uh, sorry public to private public to public and private to private two right tables and associated with the route table to this specific subnets so that you know it's uh, you know crystal clear if I were to have uh, you know a uh, if I if I were to leverage these uh, US East one B availability region as well, I'm, I should have, or I could have built uh, you know two two more route tables and associate these uh, subnets to that to to those route tables. So that being said, uh, I also built out my internet gateway as you can see here. So my internet gateway is associated with my Lambda function, so that you know uh, this is just gonna be acting as a router. Uh, and then of course I was able to you know allocate an elastic IP address to my uh, you know availability region uh, to my region so that you know this can be used in my queries uh, so that being said what I really did is also creating the NAT gateway because you know any translations being made uh, you know from my private uh, environment should be done by my NAT gateway right so this is where I associated my NAT gateway that I built out uh, to a an IP address or to a subnet that is my public subnet. Uh, so this way, you know, there is some NAT translation that's going on between my private address to public IP address, as you can see here. And uh, and of course, like I said, this is being associated with the public subnet. Uh, that's where the NAT translations are going to happen. So. You can just click on create NAT gateway and then select the subnet where you wanted to have this and make sure you select the public and then associate the elastic IP address and then you're all good to go, right? So that being said, those are the only things that I have created. Uh, the I, I want to make sure I show you the settings within the Lambda function itself because that's really key for us to be able to leverage the VPC, right? So in this case, um, in the configuration section of your lambda function you want to make sure you select the vpc and then you edit this for example let's say in this case my vpc is this i chose i had chosen these two subnets because like i mentioned i want to make sure i have availability regions uh, in two subnets um uh, or in two different uh, availability regions i sec i selected the security default group and then just saved up keep in mind that um if you were to use the basic rule uh, that Lambda created previously, you want to make sure you adjust the permissions. Um, in my case, I just had provided like all the permissions uh, associated with my EC2 instances. For example, th these uh, basically uh, everything, you know, allow full access to the EC2 so that you know uh, when whenever this Lambda function is going to execute it, it's going to execute or within this VPC itself, right? So that being said, I just saved it and uh, uh, of course with my adjusted script I, I should be able to print uh, my uh, IP address as well as you can see in my log output that's all I, that's all I'm gonna see right uh, so that being said I'd like to end this video thank you so much for watching uh, in case if you have any questions with regards to uh, assigning static IP address or you know having uh, the lambda function associated with a vpc please please feel free to uh, comment i should be able to reach out to you i'll also attach some documentation on how i did create uh, these different vpc and the necessary uh, modules under the vpc 
thank you again uh, for watching this video have a great rest of your day